Prime Minister urges private sector to patronize sports culture. BNP a poisonous boil in politics, comments Obaidul Qadir. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan arrested after three-year jail sentence. Those were the headlines. This is ATN News. Good evening, viewers. I am Shazan Hassan with English News Bulletin. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has said Bangladesh's sports and culture arena would have been richer if Sheikh Kamal was alive today. The Prime Minister urged the affluent society of to patronize sports and culture to follow the path of Sheikh Kamal. She made the call while addressing a ceremony to hand over Sheikh Kamal National Sports Council Award at Usmani Memorial Auditorium in capital Dhaka on Saturday, marking his 74th birth anniversary. Sheikh Salam has the details. Bangabandhu's elder son Sheikh Kamal was well known for his attraction for sports and cultural activities. He could play a wonderful setar with melodious vocals. He was one of the organizers of Mukti Bahini Guerrilla Struggle in 1971 also. On August 15, in 1975, Karnes, Sheikh Kamal embraced martyrdom first. Bangabandhu's daughter, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, handed Sheikh Kamal National Sports Council Award to 10 sports personalities and to organizations in eight categories. Ministry of Youth and Sports initiated the award to recall Sheikh Kamal to mark his birthday. I believe that in cultural practices and sports private sector patronization is necessary, along with the government efforts for their development. Recalling the beloved brother, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina said Sheikh Kamal was a person with a heart full of love for sports. Sheikh Kamal had no greed. He had a dream of developed sports and culture. She said, beside his talent in politics, Sheikh Kamal has interest for sports and cultural activities. She had placed the base for development of sports arena. Sheikh Kamal's organizational skill was also very strong, but he did not have the desire to be a leader, she added. If Sheikh Kamal were alive today, maybe I would not have to take such big responsibility. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina urged the private sector and affluent community to patronize sports and culture. Sheikh Salam, Desk Report, ATN News. The 74th birth anniversary of valiant freedom fighter Shohid Captain Sheikh Kamal, the eldest son of father of the nation Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, is being observed. Born on August 5 in 1949 at Tungipara in Gopalganj, Sheikh Kamal was a former executive member of the Central Committee of Bangladesh Chhatru League, the student wing of Awami League. Different sports and social cultural organizations, including the ruling Awami League, popular club Awani Limited have taken elaborate programs to observe the day. Awani Club placed wreaths at the portrait of Sheikh Kamal at Awani Playground in capital's Dhanmundi. Later, Milad and Dua fields were held seeking blessings for the departed souls of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and other family members who were assassinated on August 15 in 1975. A Warmi League General Secretary Obadul Qadir has paid tribute to Sheikh Kamal through placing wreaths at his grave in capital's Bonani graveyard. At the time, he said, BNP is like a poisonous boil for politics. As long as they exist, they will not carry out homicidal violence. The Road Transport and Bridges Minister went reached Bonani graveyard at 8.45 a.m. on Saturday morning. At that time, leaders of the party 
have prayed for his forgiveness of the departed souls of those brutally assassinated on August 15, including father of the nation, Bongamundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. There, Obadul Qadir said, Major Ziyar Rahman is the mastermind of all kind of homicidal massacres. His followers are mostly responsible for all the misdeeds and unrest. BNP again started anarchy and they never want free and fair polls, the ruling party leader added. BNP Secretary General Mirza Fokulisam Alamgir has said Awami League is eyeing for another term in power through holding polls to follow the style of previous two polls. The BNP leader made the comment while addressing a rally to protest the verdict of the cases against Tariq Rahman and his wife Zubaida Rahman in front of the National Press Club in Dhaka on Saturday. Mirza Fokul said the ruling party's such intentions to hold election according to previous style will be resisted. He also alleged that the judiciary has been made partisan. Criticizing the Digital Security Act, he however said fair election is not possible under the incumbent government. Post and Telecommunication Minister Mustafa Jabbar has assured the book publishers and sellers illegal PDF of any book will be stopped if they receive complaint. The minister said this while addressing the 42nd annual general meeting of Bangladesh Book Publishers and Sellers Association at Engineers Institution in Dhaka on Saturday afternoon. The 26,000 member body demands attention to the development of the publishing industry to ensure the rights of stakeholders besides protecting the interests of publishers and vendors, students and readers to achieve smart Bangladesh. In reply, Mustafa Jabbar said Sheikh Hasina should be made Prime Minister again in this regard. Under the prudent leadership of the Prime Minister, today 13 crore people of the country are using the internet and 18 crore have mobile connections, the minister said. Former Prime Minister of Pakistan Imran Khan has been arrested again after the Pakistan awarded him three-year jail sentence over corruption allegations. Imran Khan was found guilty of not declaring money earned from selling gifts he received in office. He denies the charges and says he will appeal. After the verdict, Imran Khan was taken into his custody from his home in Lahore. Imran is facing more than 100 cases brought against him since his removal charges he says are politically motivated. Saturday's verdict centered on charges that he incorrectly declared details of the presence from foreign dignitaries and proceeds from their alleged sale. The gifts, reported to be worth more than 140 million Pakistani rupees, included Rolex watches, a ring and a pair of cufflinks. Imran Khan's barrister, Gohar Khan, said the verdict was a murder of justice. Now, a short break. We'll be back soon with... Putin critic Navalny's jail term extended to 19 years. Three people killed in fresh violence in India's Manipur. You are watching 18 News. This is News with English Bulletin. Bangladesh Restaurant Owners Association has asked for permission to import meat to keep the market stable. At a press conference following a meeting for the Executive Committee of the Association in Dhaka on Saturday, General Secretary of the organization Imran Hassan placed the demand. He said the government should be careful not to increase the prices of commodity goods by creating unstable environment ahead of the polls. He demanded TCB products be sold at low prices among hotel restaurant owners. Restaurant owners said traders are being harassed in the name of VAT and taxes. Bangladesh Restaurant Owners Association complains that cow farm business is no longer in the hands of small entrepreneurs, but
We are taking a short break for Maghri prayers. Welcome back again. U.S. Ambassador to Bangladesh Peter D. Haas has visited Mirzapur Kumudini Hospital and Kumudini Complex in Tangai. When he reached the Kumudini Hospital premises on Saturday morning, he was welcomed by the Managing Director of Kumudini Welfare Trust, Rajiv Prasad Saha. The U.S. Ambassador visited Kumudini Library and Museum, Hospital, Nursing School and College. He was accompanied by family members including his wife and son. The U.S. Ambassador expressed satisfaction, saying that the institutions located in the Kumudini complex are doing very well. However, he did not make any comment on the questions of journalists about the political situation of Bangladesh. Now news from around the world. Imprisoned Russian opposition leader and staunch critic of Putin, Alexei Navalny's jail term has been extended to 19 years. Navalny was sentenced after pleading guilty to charge of founding and financing an extremist organization and other activities. However, he denied all allegations. He is already serving a nine-year term for parole violations, fraud and contempt of court. All these charges against him are widely viewed as politically motivated. The trial was held in a remote penal colony, colony where he has been since 2001. He is tried in the high security prison in which he is currently incarcerated. The proceedings were closed to the press and the public. After the verdict announcement, he has called on support to maintain their will to resist. Three people were killed and houses set ablaze in fresh violence in India's Manipur, Police officials said late on Friday as sporadic violence and killings continue in the north, remote northeastern state. The three people killed on Thursday night belonged to the majority Mete community in the state's Vishnupur district, a police spokesperson said. The months-long outbreak of violence began on May 3 after a court ordered the state to consider extending to the majority Mete population special economic benefits and quotas in government jobs and education that up to now have been reserved for the tribal Kuki people. A spokesperson for the Kuki civil society said it did not have an immediate comment on the latest killings. Three Indian soldiers have been killed in a shootout with separatists in Jammu and Kashmir. The incident took place in Kulgam district. The Indian Army made the disclosure in a statement on X, formerly known as Twitter. Security forces raided the Halan forest area on Friday evening after receiving information that terrorists were present at the spot, according to the statement. Private broadcaster Andy TV reported that it was a joint raid by the Army and the police. As the troops zeroed in on the separatists, they came under heavy firing, leading to three deaths. The Indian Army's 15 Corps said they had continued search operation in the area after the casualties. Reinforcements have been rushed to the area and the search operation has been intensified, NDTV reported. Now, sports news. Spain has moved to the quarterfinals of the Women's World Cup through defeating Switzerland 5-1 in the last 16. In another match, reigning champion Japan also moved to the last eight with a 3-1 victory over Norway. Since the very beginning at Auckland's Eden Park, Spain were on the offensive from the Spanish girls took the lead within five minutes of the match with Aitana's goal. However, they could not sustain the lead for a long time due to their own fault. At 11th minute, Switzerland leveled the match after the suicidal goal of Laia Codina. However, Spain sent the ball into Switzerland's net three more times before the break. They went to break with a 4-1 lead. In the second half of the match, Switzerland conceded another goal. Jennifer scored the last goal for Spain. Con el segundo de Jenny Hermoso, una acción que partía desde saque de esquina. 
Before ending the bulletin, the top stories once again. Prime Minister urges private sector to patronize sports culture. BNP a poisonous boil in politics, comments Obaidul Kader. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan arrested after three-year jail sentence. Putin critic Navalny's jail term extended to 19 years. And three people killed in fresh violence in India's Manipur. That's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for being with us.